Hello and welcome to Stories That Shape Us. My name is Joanna Daniel. And I am Glenville Daniel. Thank you for joining us in this episode of Stories That Shape Us. So yesterday we started the conversation on growth and we talked about some of the things that uh, personal growth, the differences in how we grow, but the goal, the ultimate goal is growing so that our relationship can be a safe space for both of us. Um, we talked about not having a blueprint for growth. So today we're talking about how trauma impedes growth. Um, that, that's the, the big thing that's underlining it, that, that sometimes not a vehicle, but can be a big obstacle. Well, honey, what is trauma really? So trauma is uh, an event that happens in, to us in our lives. Um, different, we, have, we experience different kinds of events that happen. So there can be... When we say trauma here at Wounds to Scars, as you know, we're talking about the, the childhood trauma, those adverse experiences that we experienced in childhood. And now we have not experienced all of them. So we're going to speak sometimes from our perspective and sometimes maybe you might be able to see yourself in some of the story. But how some of those stories can cause low self-esteem, self-hate, self-blame, negative self-talk, negative thinking, and how we filter things through that and it impacts communication and we struggle to grow as individuals especially when we are not wanting to do anything to heal and to acknowledge the, the traumas that, have, that we've experienced so so are you say, are you saying that <clears throat> are you saying that your trauma adverse trauma childhood experience is almost like a plant not getting water not getting sunlight are implanted in a ground where there's a lack of minerals and so forth, so it impedes its growth. I think that's a very good description. I because it's almost like it's a plant that's locked in a dark room. There's no sunlight. There's nothing coming in, and that plant is expected to grow. So okay. yeah, it's not getting any any new any nutrients. But now we're adults, so somebody took that plant out of that room and smack it bam in the middle of the garden and it's getting all of this light and, and it does it, it's it's growing but there's still some the fruit is probably going to look different there's some some fruit won't grow it won't bear there's all of these things that's happening but everybody expects this tree to perform to provide shade to provide fruit that is tasty to um, you know, to, to give sustenance to others and it and and bear little trees and it and the tree don't have enough experience in the sunlight to do it. Hmm. Don't he's never been given the tools, he's never been supported and propped up. And, right. You know, so that he can then <clears throat> produce the way, produce the sweet fruit that is expected of it. That's what you're saying, yeah? That's what I'm saying. It's kind of it's kind of like that. It's kind of like that. So, um, yeah, so it's in the garden and the farmer is expecting things of it, expecting things of this tree that the tree can't do. Oh. And and I, I say the farmer and then I, I thought of God. I'm like, God is not expecting things from me that he knows I can't do. However, he will put things in my way, in my path to help me to grow. And uh, and. Uh... And he will give you, he will give you the tools to help you to grow. He will send somebody with them, definitely. You know, well, I'm speaking of it. Yes, he sent somebody. He sent Jesus. He sent the the, the hope. He sent the angels. He sent counselors. He sent, he sent books. You know, podcasts. And, and particularly, he gives you the Holy Spirit to, right. be, able to be able to use those materials that are mm -hmm. the information that is, mm -hmm. that you come across. To help you to to um, to assimilate and apply or live out in your life, isn't it? Absolutely. But here's something. Here's the here's the tricky thing. We have to accept that the things that we've experienced are stopping us from growing. But sometimes we want to um, romanticize it. Like sometimes I hear some of the romantic ones is I was beaten and I'm, and I'm fine, you know, or um, I heard this on a podcast this afternoon and I heard it in church on Saturday evening in a presentation 
I was taught how not to cry as a man, but I can still be emotionally available. And I, that has stayed with me because if we don't know how to feel for ourselves, how are we going to feel for anybody else when we don't know how to feel for ourselves? When society has taught you how not to feel, how do you feel for anybody else? So we can't romanticize our trauma because we're in a different setting and we have this nostalgia, you know, home is this romantic idea that we have in our head that wasn't true. Hmm. Hmm. You know, that, 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 <clears throat> that is something that is very, that is quite calculated to, to impede our growth. Absolutely. You know, um, because you, we haven't come to a realization of the impact of this adverse experience mm -hmm. and uh, and the dust as you say is society our community would say certain things that would then allow you to then come to a conclusion and live that conclusion as if it is gospel when actually yeah. it is not you know no. Yeah. And we, we take these things with us without realizing that we're taking them with us. Mm. Some people do hunt, some mm. people don't. Yes. Some people wear it mm. as a badge of honor. Sometimes not crying is almost an automatic thing for some men. So when they're teaching you to not cry, then they teach me that if you cry, you're weak. Mm. And it's not, it's not true. Mm. So now the trauma is playing up between both of us. Because you might be growing mm -hmm. through that and is learning how to be vulnerable and wants to cry or does it in front of me who hasn't done any work of growth to understand that vulnerability is a beautiful thing in a relationship that can help it grow and become more closely connected. And so I now, with my, with my um, cultural head, might see that as, oh, wow, he's not strong enough because he's crying, you shouldn't cry, he's a man, I will teach my sons all not to cry. And so trauma now is impeding growth, not only for me as an individual, because now I'm not providing a safe space for you to, to be vulnerable in, which is important. Mm -hmm. I'm also not doing it for my sons so that they can grow and be in connection and contact with their emotions. Mm -hmm. uh, I want us to go a little bit, because I want to go a little more to, to the, the effects of this trauma seems to be where it's stored and where, where it has its impact, where it impedes without even rethinking about it, mm. you know, because I think this is, this is really, um, this is something that is very serious about uh, our growth. It's, it's like, it's like, a, it's like, a, it's like a, a toxic, it's like a, 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 um, what they call them, a parasite, mm. you know, mm. Because mm -hmm. uh, and it's like a power set to grow through, you know. Yeah. And I, I can can you go a little bit into the the, the, the that explanation because here into that um, that automatic response because I think it we need to un, we need to understand uh, this a little bit more so that we can then know how to to or uh, where to go to. To stop, to remove that power site, to to stop that power site in its tracks, so we can then start growing. I mean, I, I think that's really good. So you said something, and it triggered a Bible verse for me in Joel two, I think, verse twenty eight, that says, "God will restore the years of the palmer worm and the canker worm, and the years that the locust has eaten." Mm. So if trauma is like a canker, you know, mm. eating away uh, at our at our self esteem, at our our thought processes and our communication, a hampering conflict, our, our ability to manage conflict because it's taken so much from us. Then God says he will restore, but we have to be willing to give it up. So how does it impede? So events that have an emotional connection is stores in our brain. It creates pathways in our brain. It, we develop, we develop um, stories, and that's why stories that shape us is about the traumas that we experience in our childhood. So we develop ways of coping as a result of the things that we experience. So for example, somebody that experienced abandonment might struggle with trust because they would think 
I can't trust anybody to stay because the people who were important to me didn't stay. So how am I going to trust that people will stay? And because of that, we will go in relationships half-heartedly. We're there, but we're not fully because we have to be hypervigilant and protect parts of ourselves just in case the people leave. And so um, fully going all in in, in, a, in a relationship takes time as you start to grow and relax some more in the relationship and begin to go, okay, so you mean I can trust, I can plant flowers, I can relax because this person looks like they're staying. But that takes a lot of work personally to begin to heal those wounds of abandonment, to take responsibility for them, to acknowledge that, that they happen and it was real and it requires healing and to heal those wounds of abandonment so that we can begin to trust that, oh, so people stay. So this person has been here because sometimes people will be there in your life for 30 years, but you don't realize because the core people didn't stay. So even though this person might be in your life for 30 years, they might be on and off. They might be on the fringes. Sometimes you might call them every now and again, they call you every now and again, but they have been consistent. But because we're so focused on the ones who did we'll miss the person who were there consistently for 30 years. And so it's as we begin to heal, we'll go, hang on, this person has been here in my life for the last 30 years, the last 10 years, and they haven't left. They've, they've steadily been there. Whenever I need them, they would come. They would check in on me. They, there, it provided, it would have provided a sense of security that you wouldn't realize was security because you're so used to being vulnerable and exposed and on your own. So now if that person gets married, it's a, there might be conflict around certain things because of lack of trust. So somebody might leave to go to the shop without saying or come home late and it's, um, it's a problem. So there'll be an argument around coming home late, but you don't know why you're arguing. There might be conflict around why do you need to go out with your friends? I want to come. You shouldn't go out with your friends. And all it is, is I'm afraid you might go out with your friends and you might not come back because people who, whenever I love somebody, they've always left me. And I don't know if you're going to leave me too, because that, that requires a le level of vulnerability for, for somebody to say that for the next person to hopefully have mm. awareness enough to go. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going out with my friends. I'm going to come back. So now this person can begin to trust that when they leave, they're going to return and the relationship becomes deeper as trust is healed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our traumas get healed in relationships because yeah. it's in relationships that we got hurt. And, we hurt. Mm. and, and, and I, I think this, this then takes us to the point where we have to be intentional Absolutely. With, um, with, with whatever emotions or thoughts that we're going to come with. You know, um, for example, um, we got to be intentional with love. Yes. And uh, our, and because of our intent, because of our in, um, because of our intentions, it then shows our, it, it reflects in our emotions mm -hmm. and our actions. Mm -hmm. And uh, then this, with this being consistent, it will then help to rebuild that. Uh, yeah. And break down that, uh, that wall of trauma. Absolutely. Um, negative response. Absolutely. And I, I, I believe that a, a marriage that is safe is a beautiful place for healing to happen. Um, when, when you can be safe enough to say, I am worried that you might not come home because my father didn't return and my mother left me and I didn't see her for 30 years or I didn't see her for 10 years or, and so I'm afraid that you're not coming home. It requires vulnerability now for the next person, and, and the Gottman Institute called this turning towards, not necessarily a physical turning towards, but uh, a turning towards by saying, I understand your fears, and I want you to know that I love you, and I'm never leaving. I'm going to be here. I'm coming back at 11. But now the, the person who is going out with friends have to come back at 11 because a lot is, is riding on that. Right. And I need to know that when you say something, follow through with that thing that you say. And sometimes it might be little things like uh, little things 
little or big, I'll pick you up at five o'clock. Be there at five o'clock because what you're doing is helping your partner to build trust and feel safe in the relationship. Mm -hmm. So it might not be, it might be inconsequential to you, but to them, it's an important thing because nobody has ever followed through and people have always let them down. So if you say you're picking them off at five o'clock, be there five to five so that when they come out, you're there because in their heart is, it's another, it's another little chip away at the trust the trust issue like be still he says he's looks, they said they're going to be there at, at five and here they are at five mm. and you know it, little things if you say you're going to make dinner make dinner if you say oh, don't worry i'll do the dishes do them i'll hang up the clothes do them so little bits and these things might seem like nothing but to the person whose trust is an issue they're big things mm. and they really do help to they really do help somebody to relax in relationships and to know that, okay, so this is a healing space for me. I can be, I'm safe in this space. It takes, it takes a while though. Hmm. Wow. It, 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 I think, I think this, this is really, this is deep. This is very pertinent for our, for our spiritual growth, <clears throat> you know, because if, if we are, if we are, if I believe that if we are lacking, if we are if we are struggling on this level, mm -hmm. you know, I believe is gonna impede upon our spiritual level. Absolutely, absolutely. Because if we can't trust you to turn up at five o'clock, I'm not gonna trust God, even though He makes all those wonderful promises. Because no earthly person is as modeled for me what it looks like when someone keeps their promises, and so to the work now of learning to trust God is a different kind of growth journey. And it's, a, it's, it's work as well to be accomplished, to go, I am depending on these promises um, while simultaneously building a relationship with someone who understands that trust is an issue and taking that seriously. Mm. And, and this, is, this is where I believe that, um, this is where I believe that this, this, um, this where, the love of God has to come in very strong yeah. to override the the the, the fear, mm -hmm. you know, the negative impact, the negative emotion that the trauma would have would have actually um, fostered, you know, or manifest itself through the the fear, the the the, the, the anger, yeah. the, the, the 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 annoyance, you know, mm -hmm. um, the, the the lack of trust and the love, the, the lack of self, self belief or self trust and so forth, you know. Um, so how, so what, what do you think that, what, what do you think, um, what do you think would, what do you think um, would have to, to, would have to, what do you think would need to be done in order to really make this possible? Make growth possible. Make growth in the in, in, in the individual, spiritual and emotional. emotional. I mean, that's why we do what we do, right? So we do the retreats. There's the trauma recovery conference that is coming up June 16 to 18. We're inviting you to come. The link is going to be below this video that you can <clears throat> email me to apply. Um, one to one counseling is a way to start to understand the trauma to start to process and unpack and to heal from it, to start to understand the negative self-talk and the negative messages and the negative thing to, to understand that trust is an issue. Um, when God told me that trust was an issue and I, it was still an issue and he keeps on re revealing it as we, as I grow and I become deeper and deeper in him. So, but without that kind of work, I wouldn't have known. And so you need to read books intentionally about the, the things that you've experienced. Uh, here at Wounds to Scars, we always say, face it. Mm -hmm. There is no way to heal it if you don't face it. If you don't face the fact that your mother leaving was traumatic or your mother beating you was traumatic um, physically or your mother not being emotionally available for you was traumatic or you you know that she didn't love you because... Bled, got, um, not every mother knows how to love and not every father knows how to love. And that's traumatic for us. The, the, the parental separation or divorce, 
the, the, the family member that went to prison, the substance use, the, the, the abuse that happened in your home, sometimes moving homes, moving country, living in a new place, bullying at school, racism in the workplace. It, it's just so extensive. Mm -hmm. And so we have to first come to the place where we sit with the fact that this thing happened to me. Mm. And you know the, the sexual trauma that happened, and we while we have forgiven the people, and we're still forgiving the people, we still have to accept that these things forgiveness doesn't fix the negative self talk, it doesn't fix the low self esteem, it doesn't fix the trauma response that we have that is anger or withdrawal or fear, it doesn't fix the fact that I now need to learn how to develop trust, you know it doesn't fix those things so you know, retreats and conferences that are designed around your trauma. Um, one to one counseling is a really good place to start as well. But I find sometimes that people need to do the retreat and the conference first because they have a deeper understanding or they begin to have an understanding and then they can go into one to one counseling with a lot more information, yeah. a lot more self awareness. That's right. And then, and so, the two more questions that I want to ask you because um, this is becoming an interview. This is like an interview, but <laughs> I, I'm, I'm um it, it i think it turned out to be an interview because i think this is something you you have a, a great great deal of information that we need to really not just have a conversation but i need to ask questions so you can then mm -hmm. you know um one in terms so here i'm hearing you saying i'm hearing you talking about a, you know you have to sit with the facts so there has to be some mental mental um application here some mental work to really process what has happened mm -hmm. so that you can actually rewrite what is in what has happened in the brain so that the emotional can be re so the emotional response can be according to two, the truth or to to the rewritten part of the brain oh i love that i love that so the emotion response can be according to truth because often it's it it's uh, according to the trauma. So I might respond in fear or anger when you're leaving, not knowing that it's connected to trust. So now when we sit with it, we understand it, we process it, and now I'm learning to trust. My emotional response is completely different, and and you know we want that difference. That makes our relationships safer, our homes happier, our children settled. But when we don't allow ourselves to face it, when we can, we can't, as much as we know that the part, part of the big picture of growth is God underlining our growth journey, we can't hide behind scriptures. But I, I believe that the word of God is like a light that shines on, on us. Like in, in James, it says, you can't look in a mirror, see yourself and walk away and say, and not fix what you, what you see. So I believe that God will show us ourselves. And that's the beautiful, those are some of the benefits. Your trauma response changes. You start to change your responses now. So you're, when you were fearful now, you're no longer fearful, you're confident. You're settled, you're peace. Because you know that, oh, they're just going out with friends. He's gonna be home at 11. Because now there's this communication that's happening that I'm trusting you. And if you're not going to be home at 11, I'm going to get a text message 5 to 11 to say you're delayed and you're going to be half an hour or what, or what, whatever. Mm. Because now we're learning and we're learning to work with each other and go deeper in understanding of how we're going to live together to provide safety for, for the next person. The next but, person. but our responses uh, um, change, Changes. modified. That's right. You know, and the, the, the other thing is, is that, oh, but before I go on to that, but I also wanted to, to kind of add that here is also where um, instead of depending on the individual, you know, in terms of our spiritual growth, we depend more upon God, who is true, who is dependable, right? Who who has who can cover all those um, things that we've experienced? Yes, those those what trauma, those negative fruits that trauma has has um has 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 brought forth mm. in our lives you know yeah. especially yes in terms of the emotional um 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 um, um responses yeah yeah now that then takes me on to you know um 
in terms of the, the aspect of now the, the rewriting, the, the time that needs to spend on rewriting, um, the, the making new pathways, you know, on what is truth, because I think that is necessary for, for the growth in the American sense. And uh, how do we couple that with the, with the, with, with the God? Mm. Well, I mean, truth sets us free. And so rewriting takes time. It's going to be patient, being kind to yourself, being compassionate with yourself, being um, self-control. It's all of those things that knowing that this there's an end to this journey and I can settle in to and trust the process and trust the people that God has sent in my path to help me on this on, on this journey. Um, I believe it's a journey that everybody needs to do. Uh, everybody needs to do it. Everybody who has experienced trauma needs to do this journey because the end result is just so beautiful. It's such a, it, it results in such a changed life. Mm -hmm. And, and um, so I wanna end with truth sets us free. So even though trauma might impede our growth journey because of the things it does to us, but truth, truth will set us free. Mm -hmm. And we can be confident of this very thing that he that begun a good work in us will see to completion. And and and, and this is and this is so beautiful. So beautiful that the the truth we tell ourselves is the love of God. <clears throat> the truth that we tell ourselves that will set us free is depending on the love of God, seeing the love of God and then the growth process yeah will be wonderful it will you know god bless you thank you for joining us in this episode of stories that shape us we hope you'll join us on the next story